Many Nintendo 64 joysticks these days are pretty worn out, with a lot of the plastic in the bowl having been simply ground away. This one is loose, has a huge dead zone, and can barely reach its normal range. In the late 90s, this cool hourly rental Nintendo system started appearing in hotels called LodgeNet, and the controller was actually made by Hori. The joystick is robust and modern, like the one in the GameCube, and I actually have a few of these controllers. Back in the day, $29.95 would have pissed off my parents on the hotel bill. These days, it's not such a bad deal. The warning isn't wrong, though. This does not really match the normal Nintendo controller plug. And I've confirmed, in fact, it's not directly compatible. So let's crack it open. At first glance, it looks like a normal N64 controller. One difference is that, rather than a memory card slot, there's this giant black protrusion on the inside. This coily cord used to plug into a TV with a custom I.O. card in it, or a converter box. We're going to keep the LNR shoulder pads. They look the same as the normal controller, but they're a little bit different. We'll set aside the Z-pad too, and the little Z-board is actually pretty different in this model. It's attached to the joystick, which it has to be removed from. Let's get the PCB out of there, since we're not going to actually use it. It's a lot more compact than the original one, though. Hori built this chip, which does normal N64 controller things, but also LodgeNet buttons. Speaking of LodgeNet buttons, here's the real deal. I'd like to keep these in the controller, because it's kind of part of the LodgeNet aesthetic, even though they're not going to do anything. We should take out the buttons and pads before we do anything. They're mostly higher quality, or less used, versions of their N64 counterparts. We'll start the iron for later. We'll want to neuter the conductive pads of the LodgeNet button so they don't short out on the PCB. Unfortunately, it's hard to capture this two-handed work, but we're going to want to desolder the joystick from the LodgeNet board. Then we're done with it. Or we nicely labeled the pins on the joystick board. That's going to help us later. Now let's open up the old crusty controller. Don't forget these stupid idiot screws in here. And here's the inside of the original. Time to unplug the joystick from the PCB. So you can leave it in the shell or whatever, I don't care. Unroute the cable, too. Now the PCB is free, and you can look at its giant chip. Actually, we're not done with this. You can see just how much smaller the Hori controller is. Also, the contacts for buttons on the PCB are a little bit larger. I wonder if it's supposed to be more durable against many hours of public use. This is also a pain to record, but I desoldered the memory connector here, so I won't have to do a lot of work cutting plastic later. Gently and carefully remove the socket and discard it. Using isopropanol, carefully spray the PCB and clean with a Q-tip. Make sure you're thorough, like a neat freak. As I mentioned before, the Z-Trigger landing pad is a little bit different on both controllers. We're going to have to swap these two daughter boards. The board should be desoldered, and then swapped between the two boards. The pin order doesn't matter, as long as they come out of the back. Now, the Hori landing pad is on the N64 PCB for the Z-Trigger. The N64 PCB won't just fit in here though, we're going to have to do some cutting. This post simply won't line up, so it's got to go. Both start button posts are slightly the wrong width, so we're going to cut them down almost all the way but leave a tiny bit. These bottom three button shafts have to be removed or shortened. Otherwise, they'll hit the big Nintendo chip. Now things get messy and fun. We're not going to cut any more plastic. We're going to cut the PCB to fit inside the plastic, because it's quicker. And I just do it kind of like this and squeeze real hard. Oh yeah! The memory card slot's now flat, but in fact the whole board has to be cut down a lot. Just copy what I do here. Please don't cut yourself. Now the board can fit in nice and snug. It may take one or two snaps on the sides, and if anything it doesn't quite fit, it may need to be trimmed down a little bit further. I cut pretty aggressively along the bottom, so one jumper is needed to restore functionality. I said before that it helps us that Hori labeled the controller pins. Well, now we solder to the N64 PCB, putting the wires here. Pin 1 is the red wire. Make sure it works before proceeding. The joystick controller board has the same IC as on the Hori Mini controller. The joystick is a standard potentiometer based design. You want to route this wire securely, and maybe dab a little bit of glue to keep it in place. If it works and looks good, it's time to close the controller up. Sure enough, it works great. If it drifts a little bit when you plug it in, just hold LR and start to recalibrate it. That's not a sign of defects, and it's more likely a quirk between the Hori and N64 PCBs. 